know Mandy's before, you know that I'm a photographer. Um, I'm a, as Greg Gord said, I'm also a children's author, and I'm also the daughter of a first responder. So my father was a Woodstock OPP for the majority of my life. He's been uh, retired for about 20 years now. And my story starts um, back then when he was a Woodstock OPP, and uh, I uh, lived at home with him. I was a small child, and I would hear words um, that instilled me with fear, um, because after all, he was a police officer. Um, I heard, uh, I felt words that hurt. Um, my father and I always had a joke in high school. Um, I wasn't invited to any of the parties, but he went to the mall. <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny, except that I didn't go to any parties. <laughs> so there was words that I could feel hurt. Um, there was words that I adopted that brought me down. Um, and what I did is I channeled all those feelings into my poetry. And so I wrote poetry about the grumpy bear, which was my father on night shift. Um, mm. I wrote, uh, you know, I wrote poetry uh, about these fears, um, like when his partner was killed in the line of duty. Um, I wrote about the famine in Ethiopia. I wrote about my lost love. I wrote about my brother who was a jerk. I wrote about, you know, I was a teenager. I had a lot of poems to write. <laughs> um, and despite being the grumpy bear and the nasty king in most of my poetry, my father thought I should pursue writing as a career because he thought I actually did a good job. So I went to Wilfrid Laurier University and I studied language and rhetoric which basically meant they were teaching me how to say nothing very well. <laughs> which really worked for my other major, which was history, because I wrote a whole book report on a book I never actually read, and I got an A. <laughs> that was the first time that I learned that words were my superpower. <laughs> After university, I got married and I had kids. Shout out to my husband. Uh, he's made in the camera at the moment. <laughs> um, I met him in university. I got married. Um, I wrote a little. I parented a lot. Um, I homeschooled both my boys until they went to college. So I really got to know my boys. And um, I also started tutoring. And during that phase, I met a girl named Julia, who at 11 was hearing words that created fear, fear that she'd never graduate high school. She felt words that hurt because people told her she wasn't very smart and she adopted words that brought her down. And I thought, that's not happening. I am an English major, I have superpower that are words, and I can help fix this. Mm -hmm. So I gave her words of encouragement, I gave her words of love, and I erased those words of doubt, and I saw her thrive, I saw her laugh, I saw her become the wonderful human being that she is today, and also not a bad writer. Mm -hmm. I also met a family that unfortunately had lost their daughter to cancer at age 14. And I took Carly's story and I wrote it into a picture book called Courage for Carly. And the first time I read that book for the parents was a really hard time. That's a hard read out loud. <laughs> the book talked about Carly's journey of courage, it talked about her support from her friends, and it talked about her life um, as much as the 14 years of it. And I saw at that moment how words could start to heal. And that family went from posting about how many days she'd been gone to how much life she lived. Again, words are my superpower. I then started working at a restaurant, the Old Harmony Lunch, not the new one, the Old Harmony Lunch in Waterloo. Uh, my friends owned it, they needed some help. I started working wait staff. Well, I'm really too clumsy to be a waitress. <laughs> I did try very hard. <laughs> but if anybody knows about, has ever been a wait staff, they know the words that come at you are not always the nicest things to hear. Thanks to a book called Choosing Civility, How to Deal with Rude People. <laughs> it's an awesome book, I'd recommend it. <laughs> I learned that words can be thrown out there, but they don't have to land on you. And so that again, was its powers of words. So I took all that information and then I did, created the Kindness Kangaroo Project. This is my kangaroo. I did not wear my kangaroo costume tonight. It's much too warm in here for that. Yeah. <laughs> the Kindness Kangaroo Project has me going into schools. I work with kids to create stories. I write those stories with their ideas, send it back to the classrooms, and they illustrate the books for me. So that was the Alphabet series. It was the first series that we wrote. With this series, I take their words and their ideas, and it inspires me to write these stories. 
I then put those words in these books and it empowers them to know to do that they can do so much. And then once these books are created, it's also helping. A parent just came up to me a couple of weeks ago and said that their child was really anxious about going to grade one. And they bought the book Anxious Alligator. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> when they read, the, he read the, the parents read the story to him and it touched him so much he tucked it under his pillow that night and slept with it. I couldn't get a better book review than that. So I've learned that these words are also helping. I read a quote not that long ago that said, empowerment is, um, is hear, saying the words you needed to hear as a child. I've been giving those words to other people all my life. And now I know I can also give them to myself. Words are my superpower. I choose to use them for good towards others and towards myself. <laughs>